just when you thought I was full of surprises and nothing else could surprise you. Something was just delivered here. Something I haven't seen since I was 12 years old, maybe? Um, it's a piano. An electronic one. Um, I haven't tried playing since my hands got all weird. Obviously, I do have good hand function. Um, but this thing was sitting around not being used where it was at. So, uh, got it relocated to here. I figure, if nothing else, I want to try it again and see if I can still play. And uh, also, maybe it's gonna be OT therapy for my hands. I know it was a workout when I played years ago. Uh, practicing every day is just as much about keeping the muscles in your arms and hands strong as it is about remembering how to play. So, um, yeah, I'm going to... Ah, gosh, I don't know, this is weird. It's a full 88 key keyboard made by Roland. It's got weighted keys, so it feels, um, I mean, about as close as you're gonna get to an actual piano. This is, what, the Roland 3000S? HP 3000S. It does have a MIDI interface, so you can plug it into the computer. But uh, really, really basic stuff. I mean, you can do a key transposing, and it's got eight different voices. Um, yeah, pretty simple machine. If I recall, I usually like to use number two. Now, it does have this weird fuzzy sound coming out of the speakers. I don't know if that's the amplifier or what. I mean, not too big a deal, but... Yeah, a little different. Okay, well, I'm gonna screw around with this thing a little bit and uh, see if I can still make things happen. Who knows, maybe this will be the uh, solution in 2019 for YouTube uh, copyright claiming music constantly. <laughs> I'll just have to make my own. Although, what's messed up about that is YouTube says if you're performing covers of copyrighted music, it can still potentially be claimed. How insane is that? Like, really? Uh. song. <laughs> I was just realizing something. See how this piano has pedals? Um, yeah, that's not really a thing. But they are just connected in the back here. I can't really see back there, so I'm gonna use the camera. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we just have, where is it? Let's see. Uh, what does that say? Oh yeah, so we've got the, the soft and, oh, it's just a mono jack. Cool. Um, I'm going to make some sort of adaptive thing. I'm not exactly sure what I should use. I think maybe I could put something like under my arm so I can hit it that way, but you move your arms around a lot when you're playing though, so. There's always a bite switch, but that seems annoying. Um, all I know is it's ridiculously easy for wiring. It's just um, a mono plug, like a quarter inch one. So yeah, we'll just figure that out. Okay, time for a quick repair slash upgrade. The, um, ugh. I should probably put some diamond blade or something on the bottom of that uh, ramp. But the old air compressor here. This is the one that we obtained a while back. And I took the head off the pump, cleaned it up, got it going good and everything. The only problem we're having is this gauge is broken. I don't know what's going on here. That's pretty broken. And this cord has definitely seen some welding action. Not to mention, it's kind of old and frayed, and I mean, right there, there was some grease and it's making the cord all weird. So, I think what I'm gonna do, I was just gonna replace the power cord, but then I realized I'd have to take this off anyways. So, I'm gonna take this off, and I have, in stock, for some strange reason, 
I've got this thing, which is from another air compressor that I actually still have, but I poached this when I was installing um, pneumatic hydraulics on the back of this Grand Jeep Cherokee I used to have for absolutely no reason at all. And I used this to control a series of four Cadillac air compressors. I'm sure there's maybe one of you out there that knows about Cadillac air compressors and how they're awesome. And they're like $10 at the junkyard and can put out 120 PSI and run on 12 volts. Anyways, um, so I had taken that off and I took off the 110 volt thing and just put 12 volt leads on here and I was running low voltage on this. But this thing has a mechanical input right here for air pressure. It's got a tank gauge and I actually just took them off, but we also have this little miniature water separator slash filter and a lot hose line regulator, which the case is a little worse. The case is a little broken, but it works. So we're going to install all this on here. Now you would think that I potentially would have planned ahead for this and went down to the hardware store, bought a nice length of um, uh, power tool cord, but I didn't do that. We're gonna poach this old power strip. This thing's good for 16 amps, which should be fine. The cord's a little short, but that's all right. I would rather have a shorter cord than a longer one. And we're gonna take this cord out of here, put it in here, and then jam the whole mess onto that air compressor. Thusly solving all problems at once. I'm just gonna film little updates here and there. I'm not gonna make this a whole big long segment, but uh, battery on this camera's almost dead, so I'm gonna go plug it in and I'll update you in a few minutes. I just discovered something somewhat annoying. This controller uses spade connectors. There's no screw mounts on it. So, uh, that's usually a lower amperage application when you have spade connectors. I think what I'm gonna do is actually reuse this wire and I'm gonna solder them directly on here. Uh, I'm gonna try and loop them through the hole here a little bit so we have some mechanical retention. I'm not a huge fan of spade connectors. Or I suppose I could find some other spade connectors and then uh, solder them on. Actually, that might be a better idea. I'm gonna do that. Before we get too carried away though, I'm gonna unscrew this thing and see if we're lucky enough to actually have spade connectors inside of this power strip. Uh, that would actually be super convenient. This is one of those cheapo, like $5 power strips. And spin the wheel, big money. Nope, no spade connectors. And it uses a bus bar. It's actually a sort of, eh, I lied. I don't like that. Yeah, I'm just gonna poach this uh, cord, find some spade connectors, put them on there, and then solder them in place. After trying relentlessly, I was not able to solder the, um, spade connectors onto the new controller. It turned into an insane mess. Actually, where did it go? I tried with a soldering iron, I tried with a torch, I tried all kinds of stuff, but the spade connectors and also the slip connectors on that uh, switch will not take solder. I've gone ahead and just reinstalled this old one. I still need to get the ground wire hooked up. This has proper screw terminals on it. So I got the old one hooked back up. I'm just gonna replace this cord I think um, this is gonna be a much better option than trying to use that other one with spade connectors. Okay, we're ready to test. I've got the wiring all pretty much done. The uh, ferrules are reinstalled here. I've got the ground reconnected. Everything is cable managed as good as it can be. So, uh, I've plugged it into an extension cord here. Got the switch on and it runs up here and it's plugged into this power strip. Then I'm gonna flip this switch and hopefully nothing bad happens. Hey, it works. Okay, well, we've got a few extra gauges and valves on here now. Um, I just decided to go ahead and cap off whatever circuit this was. This gauge is bad and this regulator doesn't work. I'm not sure what this is, but it's some sort of mechanical thing and it says operating range. So I don't know if that's temperature or what it is exactly. We've got tank pressure here. We've got regulator pressure here. And this was getting a little bit too long and I wanted to put a filter on it, so I just went ahead and installed that on top of this little piece of whip hosing here, which looks like that's had some, seen some action, but anyways, now our quick connect is on the end of this. I think we should be ready to uh, plug the thing in and let it run up to tank pressure and see what we get. 
So I'm gonna plug it back into the power strip and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it looks like it only runs up to 100 PSI. Interesting. Seems to work. I feel like my face isn't moving the way I want it to right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on the road and then uh, hopefully a uh, lickety split, we should have a radiator. short garden hose but the shortest ones they had were like 50 feet and they were like $35 so I ended up buying a bunch of other stuff instead like an air hose and a tire filler chuck and some fittings and a drain pan and whatnot let's head back and start pulling this thing apart I don't know if I have the energy to do this all today or not so we've got this radiator hose here which kind of looks insane. Look how many twists and turns there are to this thing. Um, and also, this radiator is a little bit larger uh, than I thought it was. Apparently it's tucked away inside the core support on the van in such a way that you can't tell how big it is. Obviously the box is a little bit wider, but we opened it up and had a look. And yeah, it is huge. So last night I had one of those weird breathing events that I have occasionally and got a surge of adrenaline as a result of it. Shield your eyes. And as a result, I couldn't get to sleep till like 5 a.m. or something. I, got, I slept till almost 1 p.m. today, but I do not have any energy. So the thought was, we're gonna swap out the radiator, but while I'm in there and while the radiator is removed, it leaves me a little bit more space to get to the transmission solenoids. So, I don't think we're going to get this done today, but the plan is to yank the radiator out of there and then swap the transmission solenoid pack while there's a little bit more space. I need this van to be working. Driving the white one around has been seriously... Well, it's gotten to the point where transferring in and out of the driver's seat every time I want to go somewhere. It's kind of been ruining the day. Um, so I wanted to get the green van back online as soon as possible. Only problem is if I screw up that solenoid pack swap, then the green van will probably need a new transmission. <laughs> but I think I should be all right. I do have to Healy coil. Well, I might be able to get away with retapping the threads, but I may have to Healy coil one of the bolts for that transmission solenoid pack mount. But that's one of the reasons we got the air compressor uh, working properly last night and also why I bought some of the stuff at Harbor Freight. Among other things, I got this little air nozzle here and this is going to be instrumental in making sure there's no debris or other stuff around that transmission solenoid pack when I take it off of there because that's the problem is potentially getting dirt or debris or metal shavings down inside the transmission. So I'm gonna use this to make, well, I'm gonna use brake clean first. Thank you, Ryan, by the way, I'm using some of your brake clean. <laughs> um, and then we're going to pull that thing off of there and I'll tape over all the holes so we shouldn't get anything in there. But they had a nice rubber air hose as well there. And then I figured I needed a tire filled chuck, something to hang the hose on and some assorted fittings for all of the new uh, air accessories. And they even had a drain caulk. Uh, <laughs> the bottom of this air compressor, this valve is completely screwed up and there is quite a bit of water in there. I can hear it sloshing around. So I need to do this before I do anything else. 
So I think that's gonna be the plan right now. I'm gonna tip this air compressor up on end, get that old drain, drain, whatever, drain valve out of there and um, get all the water and stuff out of there. I might put a little bit of oil in there just to help mitigate rust. I'm gonna try and look inside with a flashlight and see what the tank condition is. I don't know if that's possible. That little brass valve right there is completely chewed up. When these things get rusty and haven't been taken care of, that valve gets seized up and then you can't turn it. So I tried to use pliers and the whole thing just came apart, so. Let's have a look at this here thing. Mmm, that's a lot of radiator. So right off the bat, our tank on the end is crooked. See, if you look at this level and then you look at this, see how it's bent down over here? I mean, may not necessarily be an issue. It looks like they beefed up this little point right here, because this is a big cantilevered thing. I always worried about on my van if this was gonna snap off. Also, this appears to be at a sharper angle. Whoa, what is this? Why is there a notch cut in the bottom of this? What the heck? Um. Okay. It doesn't look like it's damaged the passageways, but that's a little strange. And there's another one on the top. Yeah, there's another one right here. What the heck? I wonder if that's for some sort of weird expansion thing or something. That's definitely an after the fact sort of thing. Yeah, I wonder if they were having an issue with the aluminum on these expanding and popping the tanks off the end. Oh, you can even see here, it's like, zoop. It's all curved upwards on this end. Well, this was a $150 thing, I think, or $140 or something. Wow, look at that. Well, it's definitely better than what's currently in there. Right now, there's a big old crack right here. Looks like we've got a different style of uh, drain valve on here. Let's get the air compressor online, and then uh, we'll pull this thing out. Yeah, look at this thing. It's absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Let's see if we can get that off of here. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, look at all those rusty chunks coming out of there. Ew, gross. Okay, we're gonna have to flush this thing out. So apparently this air compressor is green in color. I started cleaning off some of the grease and it's like a hunter green. <laughs> but yeah, check out what came out of the tank. Ugh, that is no good. There weren't too many giant chunks, but uh, I tried to pull off one of these drain or plugs on the end of the tank, but it wouldn't come off. The one on this end looks like it potentially had been removed before since there's Teflon tape on there, but I couldn't get it loose. So what I'm gonna do, oops. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the the drain plug out of there. I'm gonna fire this thing up and run it for a minute or two to try and, try and dry some of that out. I might spray some more WD-40 in there just to try and get some of the chunks removed. And then, um, yeah, we'll probably just have to roll with that. I didn't film a whole lot of the actual radiator removal process and I actually filled up the SD card on the camera at one point and it turns out when it's recording you lose that footage so anyways a little while later I got what I thought were all the bolts out and I was ready to remove the thing. As it turns out though Dodge had other ideas. Most vehicles you take off two bolts, your hoses, radiator tips forward and pulls out and you're done. Not so much with this thing. Okay, I've got the thing ready to come out except for one bolt. I've got the fan shroud off, the fans out, the tranny cooler lines are disconnected and draining into a pan, but the AC has this weird little bracket over here. 
was I just threw all the screws on the floor. So I had to pull the grill off to get to it. And it is right, let's see here. It is one Torx bolt hiding way down here. Okay, I did find a Torx bit. It's a T30. And I've got, I think, a flexible screwdriver here. I think it's in this kit. Aha, there we go. Um, so we can use this thing, and uh, I think we can get it down in there. Of course, it's not the most magnetic thing in the world, but I think, potentially, we can make this work. Hopefully it's uh, hand tight. Oh wait, I just found this thing in there. That, act that might actually work better. Now the fun part of this is that bolt is going to fall down into the forbidden zone as soon as it comes out. So we're going to try and catch it with this magnet, hopefully. We don't have to uh, try and find it afterwards. If I could only hold all these lights. Maybe I can just get my fingers in there. I'm sure if I remove the headlight it would make it easier, but I don't feel like doing that. Oh yeah, I can hold this with my other finger. Oh, 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 there we go, got it. Now in theory, a radiator should come out of here. Hey, look at that. The AC condenser is bolted directly to the radiator. That's fun. Um well, there it is. It was a little bit of a pain. Um, pretty sure I did that. Uh, but yeah, so the ASC condenser is actually attached to the radiator, of course. And then, well, there's a lot more space in here now, so I'm gonna get this all cleaned up. And then tomorrow, we're going to attack this solenoid pack here. And yes, you have to remove the battery. <laughs> okay, we've made some progress, and yes, I'm wearing a light coal miners use. So what I'm doing right now is getting the transmission solenoid pack ready to pull off. I figure I can at least do that tonight. Focus. There we go. Cleaned all this down with some solvent and I've used the air compressor to blow it all off. So I think we are ready. I just need to pull these electrical connectors off and then pull this speed sensor out of here. That's the one right there on the top. I've put some electrical tape over the uh, tranny cooler lines just to kind of keep some dirt from getting in there. But I do have replacement speed sensors for this thing. It's uh, input and output. But uh, yeah, I think we're ready to rip this off and see how messed up it actually is. We've got our box of new parts here. I'm gonna pull both of these speed sensors out here, take a look at them, make sure they're not left hand thread or something weird. And then I'm gonna figure out what size wrench I need to pull them out of the van. And for that, we're gonna have to break out the large end wrenches. Okay, looks like both of them fit a one inch end wrench. I'm assuming the old ones are the same size. I bet you were thinking that end wrench wasn't gonna fit under the hood. Well, it did. Here's one of them. It smells like ATF. Doesn't really need debris on here. It is magnetic. But, uh, yeah, now we can pull the um, solenoid pack out of there. This was blocking one of the bolts. I can't find any gloves, I should have bought more. This is the bolt that was in question, and pulling it out has confirmed my suspicions. If you look really close, see how there's a silver thread right here? That's a piece of the uh, aluminum or pop metal casement that the transmission is made out of, which means we have stripped the uh, the bolt holes out. 
and that's what I knew it happened. There's only one little piece though, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, I haven't pulled the solenoid block off yet. I'm gonna do that right now and then take a look down in there and see. We might be able to get away with just retapping it. Probably not, um, but they are very small diameter bolts. So there should be some meat down there that'll allow us to uh, helicoil it if need be. Okay, check this out though. Look how easy it is to get to the solenoid pack in this thing. It's right there, just under the hood. So this is the point now where you get some Q-tips out and very carefully clean that bit of dirt out of there without it going down in any of those holes because that would be bad. This may take a while. Well, I think I'm done with this thing for the night. I uh, managed to get the, ga the gasket cleaned off of there. I stuck the two good bolts back in the holes and uh, covered up the uh, rest of the holes with some electrical tape. And I'm just gonna stick this old sensor back in the hole right here so we don't have a giant opening in the side of the transmission. There we go, that should be good. Yeah, so these other two bolts, these ones sticking up here on each side, um, they thread in just fine. This one, however, not so much. I don't have any metric thread taps, especially ones this small, so I'm gonna have to go buy some and see if maybe we can just run them down through that hole right there and uh, clean up the threads. I look down in there and they don't look, um, they don't look incredibly damaged, so I don't know. We might be able to get away with just um, cleaning them out, I don't know. But there is enough space there that if I do need to helicoil it, it's not too big of a deal. It's kind of a weird angle to get a drill in there. I'll probably have to remove, um, let's see, where are they? I'll probably have to remove these inlet and outlet things so I could get a drill uh, vertical right here. But yeah, I think I'm gonna call it a night. Almost forgot to turn on the tree. Conclusion tomorrow. I'm about to head down to the parts store and get the taps that I need to fix those bolt holes. Actually, someone that was visiting here from New Zealand had a really good idea. He said to tap the metric bolt hole out to an imperial equivalent, which is slightly larger. So I think I can do that without having to drill and get a different bolt that is imperial instead of metric, and we should be good. But that will be tomorrow. I've got everything else all edited and ready to go, so in theory, we should have the van back online. I know I'm jinxing it by saying it out loud, but hey, um, yeah, stay tuned. I will see you in 24 hours.